It's a great pleasure and great honor to have with us uh, Her Royal Highness, the Countess of Wessex, um, and our uh, wonderful uh, patron, uh, Your Royal Highness, welcome to the Awareness Dialogue. This is a program uh, that uh, will, will be launched by this interview or this dialogue that we are doing. Um, by the way, I'm Father Nadim Nassar, the Executive Director of the Awareness Foundation. I'm Huda Nassar, the Middle East Director. And um, it's been always a wonderful pleasure to, to be in your company, Your Royal Highness. And uh, thank you for uh, your generosity to be with us in this very difficult time. And Huda will kickstart the dialogue. So, the first question <laughs> for our dialogue. Why did you accept to be the patron? Of the awareness foundation a lot of people are wondering actually, <laughs> i keep asking myself <laughs> i keep I'm asking curious. myself the same question um no well, first of all it's 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 so lovely to be with you and uh and can i say i've missed you i've missed you very much um Christine, but it's a pleasure to be doing this today with you um why did i become patron well so much of uh, so many of my patronages are about the people that I, I'm with and, and, and uh, the people that I encounter. And uh, Nadim, you must remember our first meeting, um, which was at a very special dinner. How can and, I forget? <laughs> <laughs> and we were fortunate enough to be sitting next to each other. And, and I think sometimes pe certain people have a certain magnetism about them. They have something special about them. And, and, and you, I count as, as one of those very special people. Um, and I felt drawn to you and I felt drawn to the cause that you are supporting and the people that you're supporting. Um, and so during the course of the evening and when we were discussing over some of the, um, the manuscripts and things that were there being shown to you, um, and we talked about the Awareness Foundation and, and I just felt intrigued and I, I wanted to know more so um, subsequent to that obviously we had our, our, our meetings and, uh, and discussions and I just think what the Awareness Foundation is doing is, is so very special um, and is so needed um, and I just I felt that it was something that I couldn't I couldn't say no to and I couldn't possibly say no to you so really that's probably the reason so it's it's mostly your fault um, <laughs> but definitely obviously it, it is it is the the cause that I'm, I'm drawn to and the people that you're supporting it's it's one of 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 my best faults in in my life uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we we have been going through a a tough time, all of us, uh, your Royal Highness. And, and I wonder how the, the pandemic affected your, your family and uh, um, how, how could you adapt or could you adapt in this uh, lockdown? How did um, it affect you? Well, I mean, like everybody, I suppose at the beginning, um, you know, suddenly we all found ourselves in this situation and nobody really knew what it what it really meant um we had to listen to um what we were being told you know to to uh to stop what we were effectively doing day to day um and to go you know low key so we we all did that um i think i think probably i, I always think if it was just myself and my husband probably easier to cope with but i I minded for the children, um, you know, all the plans that we had for the summer and, and everything suddenly being curtailed, probably not being able to answer many of their questions, um, but realizing that it was important to be honest um, about what we couldn't do and, and to say, I don't actually have all the answers. Um, How did they react, uh, Your Royal Highness? Sorry? How did they react? Um, well, for Louise, obviously, she had her GCSEs, um, mm. which she'd been working really hard towards. And um, for her, it was hard because she went from one day being in school to the next day being at home and being told that she wasn't going to be a able to take her exams. And it was a shock. Um, it really was a shock. So for her to have to deal and, and assimilate all of that and process that, that was hard. But I, again, trying to support her, 
through that process and saying that the feelings that you're feeling are genuine. Um, you have every right to feel upset, angry, confused, um, all of those feelings, but go through them and allow yourself to, to have everything um, and, and to feel like this. Um, and so she did, and she came out the other side of it and she's absolutely fine now. Um, and, you know, she's getting on, getting on with, with things. Um, my son loves being at home anyway. So for him, in some ways, this, this is actually quite, quite been okay for him. Um, yes, uh, you know, he's, he's a little I'm bit younger. Young girls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, for him, it's, it's not been uh, quite the same, although he's missed his friends. And all I would say is thank goodness for um, technology, because Absolutely. that has meant that both the children have been able to be in touch with their friends quite a lot. Um, it's not the same as being with them, of course, but um, they've been able to speak with them on a regular basis. So I just say, thank goodness, um, we were in a, in a position to be able to, uh, to do that because, you know, a number of years ago, uh, it would have been a very different, um, different scenario. And, you know, it's allowed businesses to continue as best they can. It's allowed us to be speaking as we are today. Um, uh, you know, communication hasn't necessarily stopped. I think for some of the older population, it has been a lot harder because if they haven't already got into that kind of technology, that's much harder for them. And for people with learning difficulties, um, I think it's been extremely hard because somebody with autism, for instance, doesn't understand the concept of this kind of communication and they find it very hard. So on the one hand, it, I think technology has really helped a lot of people, but on the other hand, it hasn't necessarily helped others. Um, and, and then, and for them, I think life has been particularly hard. So uh, has the pandemic made you reassess things or want you to do anything differently? Well, I went from having a very busy diary to <laughs> staring at blank pages, if I'm honest. Um, and so what the situation has allowed me to do is to look to local activities um, I've been volunteering throughout this time with uh, a variety of organisations who are either supporting NHS workers, particularly when they were struggling to, to get to shops and to um, buy food and other goods. Um, and then also uh, things like um, food banks who have really uh, found that they've, they've that the, the requirement for their support has increased uh, enormously. Um, so I, I've, I probably um, a reassessment of some of the style of things that I've been doing. I've been doing a lot more volunteering style of engagements rather than sort of more formal engagements. Um, how that goes on, again, it'll be an evolutionary process. Um, it's difficult to say right now how that's going to pan out. Um, but certainly there'll be a lot more localized activity for me, I should think. Um, the difficulties of, of, of going uh, far afield, um, you know, whether it's appropriate or, you know, and we, we, we've all got to do a lot more. We've all been doing a lot more online. Um, and I think for, you know, I, I, it's interesting, you know, it would, I, I would like to think at some point that the opportunity to, um, to do foreign travel um, will come back but I don't see that happening yet. Um, and I'm not talking about holidays, I'm talking about, um, you know, um, my, yeah, for, for, for my activities, uh, my official activities. So, you know, I would hope that would come back, but, you know, we don't know quite when that is. We can start making some plans for the future, but it's not gonna happen but in the next few months, that's for sure. I, I have seen how popular you are abroad. <laughs> uh, I experienced that in New York and in Toronto. Uh, they, the people just love you and, and uh, they appreciate your support and presence. Um, when in, after this, uh, this pandemic, how do you think young people who are very much aware of mm -hmm. the technology and uh, they even now more immersed in this technology, how do you think the, their life would be impacted? Um, I... I 
worry for some young people's mental health because I think um, a lot of young people will have struggled with this. A lot of young people have taken to heart the importance of um, uh, staying at home and not being out socializing too much. Um, so many of them have done that. And I think some of them are really struggling to come out from behind closed doors, if, even if they're allowed to, and they can be with people and socially distance. Um, I, th I think some people are, are struggling with that um, and what they should do and how they can be responsible. Um, hopefully, slowly, slowly, as things uh, do return to some kind of normality hopefully it, they will gain more confidence um, as, as they go along but I think they'll be very mindful of, of other people um, I think that we it'll be lo a long time before we see the fallout the real fallout of all of this um, economically and I think for young people going forwards uh, the whole job prospect uh, has to be uh, a worry for people. Those that are coming through um, university right now or coming to the end of their university time um, and going out and getting their jobs, I think it's going to be, it, it could be quite hard for them. Um, you know, we're, we're hearing at the moment every day people announcing job losses. Um, you know, we haven't got to the end of the, uh, the furlough. So again, that will be another moment when we see what's, what's really going to happen. Um, companies who have been really trying to hold out for as long as they can, whether they can, they can survive. Um, if I'm honest, I don't, I don't know. I don't necessarily have the answer to that. I, I, I worry about them. But then again, young people are also very resourceful and very resilient. So I would hope that they would, you know, use that resourcefulness and resilience to, um, to do what they can. I think, interestingly, I've come across a lot of young people who've been doing a lot of wonderful volunteering. Yeah. Um, and as we all know, we have got a wonderful society that's full of lots and lots of charities and organizations that require and thrive on their volunteer support base. So I would hope that those young people that have experienced um, a variety of volunteering opportunities may well go on and continue to volunteer. Um, I would hope that uh, you know, lots of, of youth groups and organizations that need young people to, to help them operate may find that they have got um, more support in volunteers um, moving forward. It would be wonderful to think that if there was a legacy to come from this, that that's the kind of legacy that we would have, that more people want to do more in their local communities to help people. And, and you said uh, resourceful, they are resourceful. And I totally agree with you. I've worked with young people since I was 18, 19. Uh, and they are also creative. Mm. I hope also that this creativity can, can find its way out because to turn this, this um, crisis into an opportunity, mm. don't you think it's an opportunity? I do. Um, and certainly, again, going back to technology, um, I think a lot of people will, uh, will be using technology in a way that we haven't even seen yet. It may just be being born through this crisis. Um, and again, you know, young people will certainly be, be looking to see what they can do. Um, you know, we, we see how we change our shopping habits and, and everything, you know, and, um, and I, I'm, I'm sure that young people will be at the forefront of many new ideas that will be will be coming on stream. Um, I, I would hope that they will, will be. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm sounding a little bit sort of, you know, doom and gloom, but I, I genuinely think that young people will have a lot of their own answers as well. Um, but I, you know, in, in the main, I do, I do worry that you know, the most important thing is that they have opportunity and, and I would hope that opportunity will still exist. So as, as an icon and woman leader in the society, and I'm sure a lot of women are following you, like me. Uh, so <laughs> how do you see the role of women in uh, particularly in um, to build, rebuild or reshape our society? In the after, kitchen, in the kitchen <laughs> of course. <laughs> after that. <laughs> <laughs> We'll really? save that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Nadim, you should be ashamed of yourself. Of course. Um, well, I mean, you know, my work, as you know, with um, uh, women in peace and security, um, 
and PSVI, you know, I, I've been talking a lot to women around the world who are at the forefront of trying to uh, uh, to support and promote women's um, involvement in, in peace, ne peace negotiations and in building peace around the world. And what we do know is that women are being disproportionately affected by the pandemic. Again, you know, women are uh, always you know disproportionately affected by by um difficult situations and uh unfortunately there are a lot of uh peace agreements that um are either being uh not in the they're not either not being held or or not happening um we also know that women are being affected by uh, a lot more uh, violence and domestic violence in particular. And of course, the support structures that would normally be in place are finding it hard to get to women. Um, so we know that women are being affected by this more. And, and even in the UK, um, you know, often the women are uh, the peacemakers in their homes and they're having to uh, hold uh, you know a lot of things together they're having to if they've got a job they're having to do their job perhaps online at the same time as school their children online um, and to uh, to keep their children entertained and that's not to say that the, that the men in the family are not playing their part as well I'm sure where they can they are um, but we do know that gen uh, quite often that responsibility falls or the women takes that responsibility onto her shoulders um, and it's and I think it's hard I think but women again women are incredibly resilient um, and I, I again you know we we often come up with solutions for ourselves as long again as we have opportunity um, so I, women, I do think women have an important role to play when women support women the yeah. effect is really uh, enormous and i would hope that moving forward that that you know that that is the case and certainly when i've been out and about doing my volunteering um many of the activities that i've been involved with um they've involved men and women and 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 it's been actually very equal but certainly a lot of the uh the volunteers have have been women um I think inevitably because it's involved quite a lot of cooking um, and <laughs> but uh, there's been you know a lot of the men have been doing that playing their part as well um, and that's been very gratifying to see how how communities have really stepped up um, and I think because people have been on furlough or they've been working from home so therefore they they won't have that commute time that they've normally had they've had a bit more time to be able to devote to to doing volunteering um, activities but I would hope that um, you know, we, we've got to be very mindful going forward to see where the problem areas are and, 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 and what we can do to, to support women. Um, but Actually, when I remember when in, in New York, they, the, the women meeting that you generously invited me to be, to be in, I was deeply moved and, and inspired by a group of unbelievable women. Um, the, the, uh, the power, the creativity, the, mm -hmm. uh, the courage, actually. Mm -hmm. Some of them had a frontline journalism, frontline uh, economic initiatives. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Very creative and, and very tenacious as well. And where women are given the opportunity to have a voice um, and to have an involvement, uh, they take it very seriously and they, uh, they take it wholeheartedly as well. And I think if they you know, are able to take their rightful place alongside men at a table, they add something that um, is, is a, of huge benefit to the whole. Um, and it's not a competition. It's not a question of trying to, uh, to outdo anybody and certainly not to outdo Army. men. It's, 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 a t it's a team effort. Complement each other. They can't, exactly, exactly. And this is where, you know, all of the, a lot of the work that I do is trying to point that out. It's, it's yeah. trying to say um, everybody stands to benefit if you allow women to play a part um, and to contribute alongside their, their male counterparts. And we have seen also that in the Ambassadors for Peace program in, 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 the, in the Near East. And you met some of them, and mm. they they send their love and thank you, send my love excited. back as well. <laughs> thank you. They are very excited to see this uh, this dialogue because uh, they just love you, and <laughs> those are still talking about that meeting in Beirut, um, and and 
they they appreciate that very much. But they they asked me to 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 ask you, uh, do you think uh, the 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 ambassadors for peace program could also benefit, uh, for example, the people in the West? Um, we are thinking of ambassadors for peace London. Mm -hmm. Do you think it has a resonance here? I think it absolutely does. I think it has a, an, a resonance everywhere in the world. There isn't a place in the world that is without problems and complications of one sort or another. And they each problem will be pertinent to its own community. Um, and I think actually, I think it's important to... Um, to say right now as to what's going on in society with the raising of the issue of, uh, of racism. You know, I think right now that um, Ambassadors for Peace could play a very important role um, in, in, in helping to inform um, and to support um, awareness of, of how we can do better in all aspects moving forwards so um and because young people are the future and because young people have a vested interest in shaping the future i think that ambassadors for peace could could be very pertinent um to to what's going on right now in in the uk and around the world um so yes i i would fully support having having an involvement from from uh, from young people in that in that in that respect yes so what is your message for, for the uh, peace builders, the young peace builders in the world and especially in the Near East? Well, so, I mean, thinking of the young people in particular that I met um, in Lebanon um, who had come over from Syria to meet me, um, it, was, it was a wonderful meeting. It was absolutely joyous and, and also um, so impressive. I mean, they are, they're so energetic. Um, the ideas that each one of them presented as to what they'd like to do, what they're already doing, are uh, they're amazing. They're utterly amazing. And, and I would say just have faith, keep going. Um, I know it's incredibly hard, um, but if they can keep supporting one another, um, they aren't forgotten. We think of them often. And... Um, it gives you hope to think that there are young people like that out there. We need more of them. Um, they are, they're the future of their communities. Um, and if older people can listen to what they have to say, I think that will be of huge benefit as well. I think they have to have a voice um, and they have to be taken seriously. And these young people are generous of, of spirit they they have got a lot to contribute in in a very positive way and and i think the fact that awareness foundation has done so much for these young people already um giving them that confidence allowing them to have a platform and a voice is incredibly important um and and you know i and i i congratulate you for having had the idea of creating ambassadors for peace because honestly i think it's something that they really need um it's having heard what they say about the way it's it's supported them and to give them uh opportunity uh, is is great but we need more of them um right the way across the board across all different parts of society all different religions um the young people are are important to us and, and also in, in in this lockdown they uh they recorded on their mobiles and, and little devices, um, ideas, mm. what to do in the in the beginning, and we we collected that and we edited them into one one video, and mm. it was so popular on Facebook. Mm. Uh, they suggested ideas to each other and to the to the churches and and to the society, to the society. what they can do. Young people can do sitting inside instead mm. of being frustrated. Good. And as you said, they, they could be creative and they could uh, have initiatives and, and courage. It's amazing. And later they did another uh, video telling everyone what they did. What they did. So I, I learned from them, really. And somebody suggested to do online uh, courses. Yeah. And they are free. I said, okay, I will try. 
and so far I did like five courses and one of them is um, uh, on autism. I really enjoyed very, very much because autism is really, it's a huge uh, uh, subject to read. But I felt it's very important to know something about autism because we have another program which is Little Heroes. We work with the children. So I felt autism could help me in the future with the children. So I, I felt these young ambassadors taught me wonderful things. Mm. So, I, I learned how to paint. Um, <laughs> Are you any good? I love painting. And um, um, I took a different courses of, of painting, abstract paintings and icon paintings. And it was amazing. And they, they also, they inspired me to do that. Yeah, I think, I, you know, I, I do think we have to listen to, um, uh, listen to our young people. Um, as you know, they do definitely have wonderful ideas and they have a different perspective as well. Um, and it's not something that we, you know, we, you've, you've got to hear it from them. Yes. And, and allow them to, to, to reach out to us. Yeah. And um, your Royal Highness, we are extremely happy to have you. The time just flies, flies. with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, I'm sure you're very, very busy. Uh, to have this dialogue with the Awareness Foundation and on behalf of everybody. Thank you. Thank you for being our patron. Thank you for the, the message of support. You are an inspiration. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's so nice to see you again and uh, give my best wishes to everybody. Um, it's been we lovely will. to talk to you and uh, we'll, you. we'll see you again soon. Well, <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. God bless you. Bye. Bye.